The player base of Genshin Impact is the primary reason the game is viewed so badly. Hi, I've been playing Genshin Impact since launch. I also want to apologize for this video. I just got my wisdom teeth taken out and I'm kind of having issues talking, but I'm going to power through it for this one. Genshin Impact is, at the very least, objectively speaking, an open world gacha game. Sure, you don't necessarily need to buy any of the characters and you don't really need to do anything other than just play through the first beginning missions to actually get a few starter ones. The game has a lot of content available to you. Whether you're an older player, whether you're a new player, it doesn't matter. There's a lot of things you can do from character quests to commissions to art artifact farming and domain farming to the first time run run domains and exploration is a very big part of that at the end of the day i don't think anyone can really object or in some way shape or form deny that genshin impact does have a lot going for it and it's one of the reasons why it's so popular i just think instead that one of the primary reasons people dislike genshin isn't necessarily for the game itself now don't get me wrong one of the biggest arguments against it is it's gotcha so therefore it's bad but realistically shut the fuck up if your legitimate reason against a game actually having good qualities is it's gotcha, then it means you didn't really have an argument to begin with. But outside of this, the game's community and the game itself is viewed so badly because of the actions taken primarily by Genshin Twitter. And if you're a Genshin player who has in any way, shape, or form interacted with the community itself, you know that sometimes, 50% of the time, the people you're going to interact with are kind of dumbasses. I'm not getting paid for this video, I already know, so fuck it. 95% of the arguments and complaints about Genshin boil down to this game is too easy, or the anniversary is too bad, or we don't have enough resin, or the rewards just aren't enough. So let's address these four points pretty evenly. The game is too easy. There is a chance that an individual who's saying this has C6 characters, but we're going to ignore them because if you have C6 characters at any point in time, any of the limited ones, you don't deserve to talk about difficulty. You C6 someone. That is essentially the guaranteed way to ignore difficulty. And if game is balanced around your C6, 90% of the people who play this game won't be able to complete it. So shut the fuck up. But let's move on to the other side of the argument. This game is too easy. This is either said by individuals who have really good accounts, and if you do, and whether you're free to play or a light spender and have a good account, more power to you. But it's also said by individuals who want to use it as an excuse to not actually attempt at the difficult content, that being Spiral Abyss. If we're looking at Genshin Impact from launch, each major patch, especially, the game's difficulty in terms of the Abyss has actually ramped up significantly. When we got to Sumeru, because of how strong Dendro reactions were, we ended up getting Consecrated Beasts. If you've played Genshin, at least recently, I don't need to tell you how strong the Consecrated Beasts are and it's made something like healers or shielders a really, really viable option. And if you play teams like Nilu Bloom, you know how high the self damage can add up, especially when the enemies damage you enough. Now, I won't objectively deny that some constellations on characters trivialize certain aspects of the game. I'm not going to deny that because it's true. And it's in a lot of people's best interest to pick up those aspects and those constellations. But I'm not also going to say that a character can immediately trivialize the entire game. Yes, Zhongli's shield is strong, but you can't clear Abyss with just Zhongli's shield. You need to understand mechanics. Spell of the Abyss is as much of a DPS check as it is a knowledge check. You need to learn rotations, you need to learn who's weak to what, you need to plan out your team based around the elements needed for the Abyss selectors or for the enemy you're fighting off against. You can't just simply walk in there with a really strong unit and out damage everything because a lot of times if you try it the enemy goes into a different phase and that phase wants you to use a different element so your team needs to be built around being able to do that so if you're using the game is too easy as a valid excuse to not participate in the game's difficult content also shut the fuck up because you haven't completed or in any way shape or form participated in the difficult content so if you aren't going to do that you can't judge the difficulty of it because overworld is meant to be easy you're not meant to be stressed out while just walking around. It's where a lot of people test out their characters, where a lot of people get a new character like Kiara and just decide to have fun with it. But let's bring this over to the second argument. The rewards aren't good. This is in tandem to either the anniversary is bad or the game is too easy because the Abyss doesn't give high enough rewards. One of the things people like to complain about is that the Genshin Impact developers did state they don't want to give players anxiety. And yeah, that's stupid, it's idiotic because there's a lot of fear missing out in this game. But if we're talking objectively, Having the rewards, or at least the best rewards, like Prima Gems, be accessible to everybody means that if you choose to do the harder or higher difficulty content, you choose to do it only for either the sake of doing it because you can, or B, for the more and enhancement ores. There realistically is no incentive for them to put the hardest rewards behind the hardest content that you can't do in a limited time, because that means that new players who get into the game won't be able to access it. 
By comparison, I played Ark Knights. A lot of the rewards in Ark Knights were locked behind difficult stages and events. Guess who can't complete them if you're a new player? Me. Anybody, multiple individuals who I know and speak to were incapable of actually completing the harder stages and that pushes them away from the game because they feel like they've missed out on something. But both of these complaints are oftentimes said in tandem with Hoyaverse doesn't listen to the player base. So if we're actually talking about that, usually it means Hoyaverse doesn't listen to what I specifically want. This could be more difficult content like Spyro the Vist, maybe an arena, maybe something like Theater Mechanicus. And if you want that, I'm going to be honest with you, that's a valid point. We do want more difficult content for some people, but we also need to understand that because of the way Genshin is built, a lot of people only care about the lore. I love the lore of this game, but I also love the combat. I enjoy this far more than Honkai Star Rail. Genjin Impact is a game where the combat isn't determined just by your skills, but also by your human error, what you know as an individual. You can iframe, you can dodge, you can choose how to outrange the enemy with bow characters like Yoimiya and Ganyu. So the varying forms of combat interactions we have in this game, yeah, they're not for you, and that's fine. You can hate the teapot, you can hate TCG, I personally like both of them. But you can't deny that it is something different. If the game was combat, 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 you would get bored of combat. Having different avenues for players to actually enjoy and express themselves in something that's different than the game's usual combat system is actually a good idea. Being able to say, hey, I decorated a teapot and it looks amazing, if he, even though no one else can actually see it or even though nobody else will actually choose to visit it, means a lot to certain people. I have two teapots built. I adore them. I understand that not a lot of people take the time and effort to do that. But for me, it's nice. So I want, to, I want you to understand, yes, people want more difficult and combat-oriented content. That's fine. And yes, some people didn't experience the event. So I do believe they should add that back in like they did with Tonka Star Rail. But I also want you to understand that we have gotten additional forms of content, TCG being one of them. The anniversary sucks. Yeah, it did. But I'm going to also mention this point. The anniversary is still the, one of the most hyped moments in Genshin Impact because you get an entire festival. The Lantern Right is still, to this day, the best festival we've had in Genshin. It has usually the best characters being seen, whether that's Zhongli and Venti, whether that's a Xiao centered one, whether that's anyone else. It usually has an important story beat, it has an event weapon. We had the Sea Lord, which is the fish claymore last time. The rewards, yeah, they aren't a free 5 star, but there are 10 pulls in addition to whatever the abundance of Lantern Right quest rewards are. And so at the time, it's actually speaking a really good thing. Either you get a bunch of rewards or you get a really nice scene. And it, at the end of the day, is still one of the best packaged events overall. You're not logging in and getting 10 pulls. You're logging in getting, I believe, what? The 10 pulls the game offers you in addition to whatever the game of the year rewards they give you if they do choose to. In addition to either a bunch of Primo gems on the side, some character materials, some talent materials, I'm not gonna lie, yeah, it's the big event. And for the big event, they do give you slightly more rewards than the normal big event. But it is still one of, if not the event, that has the most effort put into it. I wouldn't complain if they gave us more, but I also think we need to accept that at the end of the day, the game already gives you more than average. This isn't me saying, oh yes, Genshin is a perfect game, don't hate on it. This is me instead saying that a lot of people who complain about the game don't really either play the game, enjoy the game, or just want to complain. Nobody's going to hate your game more than you. Let's be honest about that because you played enough to recognize its flaws and you played enough to want to do more. So I understand where you're coming from. I just think a lot of us don't necessarily articulate that point well enough. And I'm not saying this was the video to do it. I'm just saying that a lot of people in the community did kind of mess it up. And that perspective shift on the community itself does affect everything and everyone else's view on the game because why would you get into the Genshin if all you hear about is how bad it is from the people who play it? It's like hopping into Destiny. No one's gonna hop into Destiny if all you do is complain about Destiny. But hey, that's just my opinion. What's yours? Give me yours down below, join the Discord server, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.